Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Steve with another version of the relaunch of the Commodore 64 fun programming series. Okay, so haven't really been thinking of a lot of stuff here in this one. Um, just kind of throw in some other kind of progression development that I'm going to be trying here. So the last time we actually basically ended up discussing some of the simple concepts of you know starting loops and string variables and stuff like that which is some of the common things you're going to learn when you first get in front of a, a basic interpreter or you start you know programming in computer like software languages and um, so at this point I think I'm going to probably move into I think I'm going to move into reading data statements that would probably be the next easiest thing I'm using a book here C64 user's manual to kind of use it as a guide. So maybe we'll just do some variables and you know, I think I've kind of introduced string variables, but a variable is essentially any value with a letter after it. Like this would be a numerical variable as I demonstrated in the last video. This is a string variable which represents, you know, anything inside of it you can put would be a string, your name or whatever and that would just print a string. You can also print numbers inside of there but they won't, you can't calculate with them unless you convert them of course. So, I know it's like some kind of signing code or something. Actually it gives me an idea. Yeah, I think about maybe doing a, I'll try to design a web page in C64 see how that comes out. Not that it would really connect to the internet. That, that would be quite a interesting project but anyways let's go into the um, reading variables and we'll just start off with some simple numbers and just kind of work our way through and see what we can come up with. So anyways we know if we have A there let's make it N for like number. So if we print N it'll just print 1. <coughs> Oops. I forgot to put the N in there. I left the A in there. So if we print N it's just going to print 1. So this is basically going to keep track of them. I'm going to clear the screen here again guys. Just for clarity here. So we can clear the screen each time. So it's going to print one. So anything you change in this variable is going to reflect whatever number you put into it. doesn't matter what you fill it with. It's going to print that number. I got to change this bit. And so right there it's going to print whatever number you stick inside of here. So this is how you get your numbers out to the screen and so forth. So like that. So what we want to do is just try to do some simple loops here. I'll start off simple. X equals 0 to 10. It's going to print from 0 to 10. And we're just using X as a variable. Uh, what we're going to do is a little concatenation. It's going to maybe a little advanced, hopefully not too much advanced. Concatenation means we're going to append a string variable to this actual number already. And we're going to make it print a comma after every number that we print. So let's do that. So now you got a series of numbers printing across the screen there. And you see the comma separator in between there. So that's how you kind of get numbers stringed together. Um, if you wanted to add something else to this, for example, you could uh, like string in. Let's do some. Let's just go up here and just create a value for A strings. And you can make it anything you want, whether it's W strings, A strings, it doesn't matter. Um, we'll just print, I don't know, any letter, it doesn't matter. Let's use X. X is a common one. So we'll do X, and then we'll just kind of append this X inside of here. What you want to do, um, I'm going to erase this just for a second. What you want to do when you want to append, all you have to do is leave the semicolon in between. It acts as a, a append or a concatenator. We're going to print in the new value, which is W strings, another way to concatenate or the you know add them together. And then we're going to set the comma here, and then we're going to leave the semicolon so it stays on one line. So there you go. Now you got the little X going in there. Almost like some hexadecimal code or something, huh? So whatever you put in here is going to print out, of course. Anytime you append to this, it's going to keep adding to that. So that's basically what you're doing is you're just stringing together a bunch of um, I don't know what you call them, characters or whatever, or values. Like this would be your numerical value, alphanumeric, or numeric, excuse me. This is like your string, uh, it's basically this is your alphanumeric, so it could be characters, numbers, whatever. And this is just taking whatever's inside this quotes and printing it out to the string. 
and I put a comma here, you can put a period, doesn't matter what you put in there, it's still going to print it out to the screen there. So hopefully that makes some sense. And let's get on to some other stuff here. We'll just kind of remark, which means remark, go to the next line or like a comment. And we're going to try maybe some simple math or something. What to say? Math subroutines or something like that. So what we can do is uh, take any values. So we'll use x again. X is a pretty common one. So we'll just say like any value x equals 5, uh, y equals 2. And when you want to add them together, all you have to do is uh, print them. Kind of a couple things you can do here. You can print. Don't cut if I can find that plus again. It's right here. That's right there. So plus x plus y. We'll do like a printing out. And we're kind of um, have to. We're going to print another line so you can kind of see what I just did here. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of in the way. So right there, you see the seven. It just printed my seven there. Up here, we could just do like another print a line and just say print. Um, mathematical routines or whatever and it's going to print after that the number of course we'll set another space inside of here use use print for an extra space now we got our little space going on and that's our first one so this we'll just say mathematical routines um, I'm going to change this to 85 you go here 80 and this um, Let's see, mathematical. Oh, I wanted to say um, addition. Well, there's our addition. Maybe we'll just make a simple calculator or something. There's our addition. 90. Um, do another print. Let's skip a line. And then we'll set. Um, we'll just create new variables again. Anytime you retype a new variable, you're starting it over again. So this is going to change whatever that 5 was previously change it to like a 10 now x is going to be equal to 10 change it to y or I don't know and then this time instead of printing x plus y we'll just say x asterisk y if I can figure out where the dang asterisk is let's see I think it's over here by the numbers Poor me, I don't have a commenter in front of me, so I have to kind of, okay, it's right there. So x times y, and that will do the multiplication. And now you see the multiplication underneath there, so let's just kind of set another line here. Let's see. We'll just set a print. You can also have these on the same line. Kind of, you know, combine them together, and we'll say, um... Multiplication, multiplication. I think I spelled that right. No, I didn't. Multiplication. And then we just do our math there. There we are addition and our multiplication. Subtraction, following the same scenario, except this time, all right, subtraction. And we're going to do some subtraction. So x equals I don't know, 8. And y equals 5 or something like that. And then to do the subtraction, you just use the minus. It's very simple. Right there. Now it's going to do the Subtraction. Now you see we got the mathematical routines, got the addition, multiplication, and subtraction going on. I'm going to get rid of this 90 print. So we can kind of you know, pin them together there. Now the next thing we're going to be learning, of course, is division. And print value again. And we'll just make it say division. And division, you just use a little divide sign like that. Actually, I've got to put my values in again. It's going to remember the previous values, otherwise remember. So let's do something like um, 24 
divided by 4 or something like that. X divided by Y, if I did that right. So 24 divided by 4 is 6. Because we know that 6 times 4 is 24. So there's kind of how you get your, your variables going and such. So what I say is I was going to teach you a little bit about variables and stuff like that. And we got a little bit maybe making a calculator. We'll just say calculator or something. Let's see if we can get this. Before I teach you the calculator, I'll need to teach you a little bit about if conditions. So we'll just set this to if conditions. So if is going to, it's like a comparison of values. You just take two values, compare like your apples to oranges, so that, so that speak for example. So I'll just kind of write that out. Compares, values, you can also compare strings, and so on. So what we're going to do is we'll write a simple little program here to kind of compare two different values. I'm just going to I'm, just for simplicity, I'm going to keep the x. You can rename the variable to whatever you want. You can also use, um, please don't erase my stuff. You can also use two letter combination like that. For those who really want to be very specific, we might just change this up to two. You do like xx or something like that. Cobb 64 is known for their two characters. If you go beyond two, it kind of ignores the third character. So we'll just leave it at xx for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare two values basically. So 12. And then we'll just set yy to a totally different value. Um, 7, I don't know. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check. Check if xx is equal to yy. And the way we do this is we say this and then skip a line there. You just use the word get condition, conditioner. The keyword if, you say xx, which was, we know the 12. Is 12 equal equal to yy? If 12 is equal to yy, then it's going to say they are equal. Otherwise, what you would do is to make it check if it's not equal, you would use if xx is greater or less than yy, then they are not equal like that so it'll let you know whether they're equal or not and what happened let's see xx equals y12 let's see what happened in my values here <laughs> just curious what happened xx yy you could also use that to print out your values the question mark is like a print separator so 12 is not equal to 7. It should have printed out that line. Oh, I left it in the remark. I'm getting too much habit of using these remarks now. So it was ignoring my lines because I had them as comments. So now it'll give me an error message. What happened? If xx is equal to yy, then... Oh, see there I go skipping stuff again. So print, they are not equal. I'm trying to use some object-oriented programming, I'm trying to skip steps here. So, print, they are equal. Now it'll work. There we go. So they are not equal. So we know tw 12, and I'll just kind of print them out to the screen to show you what I did here. Print xx, comma yy, so we can kind of see them. And you see the 12 and the 7, and they are not equal. I'm going to set a space between this to make this look pretty. or format it if you would. So now we know 12 and 7 are not equal. Now if we go back here, however, we change these and let's make them equal. This time we're going to get that other condition to F execute because we know xx is now equal to yy. So now you'll get the message they are equal because they are. Makes logical sense. Now let's go back and switch them to uh, any other number. It doesn't matter. We're going to set 5 for example. So we're going to use a new conditioner called if xx, which we know is 12, is less than yy, which means it's 12 less than 5, then we'll basically say the xx is less than yy. 
just for those who need to understand for examples. And otherwise, we'll use another uh, operator called greater, which means it's 12 greater than 5. Then we're going to say xx is greater than yy. Now you'll see it'll say an error message. Probably because I forgot my dang print again. Let's see. Yep, see I've got such a habit of doing this now. <laughs> you can also stick a little question mark in here. This is kind of a cheat mode. And it'll automatically convert it. There we go. So xx is greater than yy because we know 12 is greater than 5. So another thing we're, we can do here is we can actually print out these values. You saw me do the concatenation stuff earlier. I basically insert it inside the line. So this is going to get a little advanced, but kind of stick with me. So if xx is less than yy, then we're going to almost copy the same line. Instead of printing out xx in the quotes there, we're just going to type it by itself. If you want to know just for simplicity without putting the space, with leaving spaces to make it easier for you to understand, you just say xx like that. And then what you're going to do is, oh, you're going to set the semicolon. I almost forgot. Semicolon is a separator. Semicolon. And then you're going to just kind of finish the message. Put a space in it so it looks good. Is less than yy. Now this time, it won't print anything because it hasn't found our value yet. So we'll use it for the greater command. Because we remember only the, the greater command was working earlier, not the, the less than. So we'll go back and we'll convert this now to the greater. If xx is greater than yy, then once again print xx is greater than yy. I have a spelling here. So hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense. And now you'll see it'll print the value 12 is greater than yy. Now why is it still saying yy? If you can figure that out, then you've got some background in programming. I kind of gave the example away earlier. It's because you have to print the value or it won't understand what this yy is. It's only going to see between these quotes right here. And it's only going to print what's in those quotes. So it'll print exactly what you put in there. So if we change that, we'll set another line just for simplicity here. We're, we'll kind of stick with the same pattern. If yy, then print xx is less than, and then we do it like that, and we do a semicolon, and we just hit yy like that. And we'll do the greater. If xx is greater than yy, then print xx is greater than and then I need my space in there actually oops I never find that dang semicolon then yy so now it'll print out the exact numbers so 12 is greater than yy 12 is greater than 5 so see it kind of repeats the values here the first time it's showing you the examples of printing out the exact strings the second one is showing you the just the first number to change the x and then the last one of course is changing the x and the y. So now it'll work with anything you do in the program. If you go back here and change any of these values in the program, it'll reflect whatever you change. So if you change this to 50, you're going to get different results because it's going to be looking at the x and y comparison. And now it's telling you 12 and 50, they are not equal, so we know 12 is not equal to 50. xx is less than yy, so this is xx, it is less than yy, so that tells you 12 is less than yy or 12 is less than 50. So that's kind of an example of conditions. Um, I showed you everything in here from equal to less than to greater and some concatenation in this example. I didn't want to overload this with too much. I wanted to keep these videos a little bit more short, you know, condensed if I can. So I'm going to probably leave that one off to the series for now and maybe next we'll go into some other different kind of stuff for, you know, writing more simply you know more advanced programs are just kind of progressing forward so i hope you guys enjoyed this please like and subscribe i appreciate that and this is steve marl signing off